Hi, and welcome to Bits and Bites with Tim, or at least that's what Anthony over on YouTube wants to name this podcast. And for that entry, he has been put in the running to win a PLC Tools SIM ALP2 Analog Simulator. Between now and the ninth episode, we will be taking your submissions on what we should name this podcast. And then we're going to take the best submissions and put them out to an online vote to determine what we name this podcast. And we'll also make some other announcements in episode 10. But I thought Bits and Bytes was appropriate for this episode because we're going to continue talking about binary. A few episodes back, we talked about what binary numbers were, how to convert binary to decimal and decimal back to binary. And I tried to do it without any props just to see how it would work. And I got mixed feedback. And at first, get first guys, everyone know I, I'm very cool with mixed feedback. I'm cool with negative feedback. It helps me do better. Some people said that they loved it because it made them write it out and it just clicked in their mind. Other people said, no, I need the visuals. So I'm going to try this one with some light visuals. Also, before we get started, if you would take a moment to hit that like button or give us a review or whatever options you have on your platform, it does a lot to put gas in our tank and keep going with these series. Let's start with a quick review of what we talked about last. There's one confusion that some people had was they said, oh, I'm not sure I understood the numbers you were saying. I got lost somewhere in them. The values of each bit box are written right here. So bit zero, which is the far right hand bit, is going to have a value of one. Bit box one will have a value of two. Bit box two will have a value of four. Bit box three will have a value of eight. And mainly we are doubling each time. So bit box four is going to be 16. Bit box five is going to be 32. Bit box six is going to be 64. 7 will be 128, 8 will be 256, 9 will be 512, 10 will be 1024, 11 will be 2048, 12 will be 4096, 13 will be 8192, 14 will be 16384, and then I left bit 15 out. And that's the main thing we're going to talk about today is one this bit 15. Also, we're going to expand on the power of zero and what you can do with it. And we're also going to talk about the power of negative one on our signed integer. In the previous, though, we talked about that if we have zeros in each one of these, then our binary value will be zero. If we take and put a one into bit zero, then our decimal number is also one. But in the case of binary, you only have two numbers that can go in there, a zero or a one. So if I add another one to our number, then this has to roll back over to zero and will carry over a one to bit box one. And really long story short, that's where we get the saying that there's 10 types of people in the world. Those who understand binary and those who don't. Now, if you're struggling a little bit to follow this, check out the description. I'll put a link to the video where we went through this in detail because mainly I want to concentrate on bit 15 now. Bit 15's purpose changes whether you're using a signed integer or an unsigned integer. And I want to break a myth really quickly about bit 15 is some people say that if you have a signed integer, then bit 15 is your sign bit. And if it's a zero, it is positive. And if you want a negative number, you just put a one there. Well, I'm gonna show you what that is in a second, but this is not correct. Putting a one in bit 15 does not make whatever the value is a negative value. So we had one zero here, which is going to be two. But putting this one in bit number 15 doesn't make it a negative two. Now it does make it a negative number. And that's where people, when they're looking at all these ones and zeros, they start thinking, oh, well, yeah, that must be what that is. Bit 15, if you're working with a unsigned integer, will continue just like it did. So we're going to double 16,384 and make it 32,000, 
768. If you're working with a signed integer, then this value is going to be a negative 32,768. Let's go ahead and work this one out by hand like we did in the previous binary lesson, just so we can see that. Because each value over here will be multiplied by whatever value is in each bit box to give us the result. So we already know that any number times zero is gonna be zero. So we're not gonna worry about those. But bit one has a one in it. So its value is gonna be two. And bit 15 has a one in it. So its value in the case of a signed integer is gonna be a negative 32,768. Now we add all of these values together. And yeah, I'm gonna skip all these zeros because any number plus zero is gonna be zero. But a negative 32,768 plus two is gonna equal a negative 32,766, which is nowhere close to the negative two. So how can we figure out the value of a decimal negative two in binary. We're gonna do it the exact same way that we did in the previous video when we did decimal to binary conversions. We're gonna find the value on our cheat sheet that is the closest to our decimal number without going over. And in the previous video, we started on our high, which is 16384, and we would find the one that was not going over which yeah, we go that way and we're gonna to get to zero and zero is greater than a negative two, so it can't go there. But what can go there is 32,768. So we're gonna put a one in bit 15's box. Then we'll bring down our original number, which is a negative two, and we're gonna subtract what is in box number 15. And on our cheat sheet, it says that it is a negative 32,768. So we're gonna do minus a negative 32,768. And when you subtract a negative number, that turns this into a plus sign. So we're left with minus two plus 32,768. And that's going to equal 32,766. Now we want to find the next largest number to this without going over. And that's going to be bit 14 at 16,384. So I'm going to put a 1 in bit 14's value. And I will put minus 16,384. We're gonna do that math, and that will equal 16,382. Now again, just like in The Price is Right, we wanna find the value that is as close to 16,382 without going over. And that is gonna be bit 13. So I'm gonna put a one in bit 13's box, and then I'm gonna subtract bit 13's value from our 16,382. So 16,382 minus 81.92. And that's gonna equal 81.90. And we're gonna repeat the same thing again. We're gonna find the value that is closest to 81.90 without going over. And that's gonna be 4,096. And we subtract those two, and we're gonna end up with 4,094. And, whoops, I forgot to put a one in that um, 12's bit box. So I'll put a one in 12's bit box. And you're gonna start noticing a pattern here, is each time we do this, we're too shy of the number that we actually plugged in. So the closest one to 4,094 without going over is gonna be 2,048. And I put money that our remainder is going to be 2,046. So 4,094 minus 2,048 is going to be 
2046. And I know this is going to be a little grueling, but I can't think of a way to fast forward through this part. So I'm just going to keep on going. Also, I forgot to put a one there. So the closest to 2046 without going over is going to be 1024. And 2046 minus 1024 is 1022. And then the closest is going to be bit nine at 512. We subtract those, we're going to end up at 510. Then the closest without going over is 256, bit 8, and 510 minus 256 is going to be 254. And then 254, the closest without going over is bit 7 at 128. And that's going to leave a remainder of 126. So then the closest is going to be bit 6 at 64. And that's going to give us a remainder of 62. And then the closest without going over is bit five at 32. And that's gonna leave us with 30. And then the closest without going over is bit four at 16, which is gonna leave us with 14. And then the closest is bit three at a value of eight. And that's gonna leave us with six. And the closest without going over is going to be bit two with a value of four. This is going to leave us with a remainder of two. And then the closest without going over is bit one, which is a value of two. And that leaves us with no remainder. We'll fill a zero in in bit zero. But yes, all ones except bit zero is going to be negative two binary. Now, I wish I had picked a better number, but we had kind of led into the two, and then I got doing the negative two, and then I was like, oh my goodness, that's a whole lot of math for this conversion. Just to show you that mainly this bit 15, simply putting a one there does not make it negative. All it is, is this value of it is going to be negative 32,768. Now let's talk about what is the maximum range of a signed integer versus an unsigned integer. And no, we're not gonna do this one by hand. I'm gonna pull a calculator out and to figure out our maximum value, I'm going to add bits zero through 15 using a positive 32,768 for that last number. So in that case, one plus two plus four plus eight plus 16 plus 32 plus 64 plus 128 plus 256 plus 512 plus 1024 plus 2048 plus 4096 plus 8192 plus 16384 plus 32,768. So our max value is going to be 65,000. 535 and our minimum is when all these bits are zero so it'll be zero so a unsigned integer 16 bit can go from zero to 65,535 now what if it's a signed integer because i get a lot of people that ask me why the min and max value are not the same on a signed integer well, i think we can all agree and if we add all the positive values together, that will be our maximum positive value. And if I was really smart, I would have done the signed integer first because yeah, I did just have that result in there, didn't I? But we'll do it again. 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 8 plus 16 plus 32 plus 64 plus 128 plus 256 plus 512 plus 1024 plus 2048 plus... 4096 plus 8192 plus 16,384 is going to give us a value of 32,767. So that's as big of a positive value as we can get. Now, unlike the unsigned integer where our lowest value was all zeros, our lowest value in this case will be when bit 15 is a one and the rest are zeros. 
which is going to give us a value of a negative 32,768. And that's where we get our range from and our little discrepancy in the values of a negative 32,768 to a positive 32,767. Now let's talk about two magical values is first we have the value in decimal of zero. And this is a common question I get from programmers is if I have a lot of bits here, how can I set them all to zero with one instruction? Well, in that case, you simply use a move instruction and we move a decimal value of zero to our integer. And that is going to put zeros in each one of our boxes because the only way we can come up with a decimal value of zero is for all those to be zero. So there's the quick way to clear out all your bits. The other thing that I have a lot of people ask how you can do is how can I put ones in all of these boxes? To do that, all we need to do is figure out the sum of all of these. And we are working in signed integers in this case, since most of the control systems we work with, these are signed integers. But if we add all the values on our cheat sheet, then 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 8 plus 16 plus 32 plus 64 plus 128 plus 256 plus 512 plus 1024 plus 2048 plus 4096 plus 8192 plus 16384 plus negative. 32,768 is going to equal a value of negative one. So if you move a negative one into your integer, then you will get ones in each of your bit boxes. Now this is for a 16 bit integer. And I chose that because it's still probably the most common, arguably 32 bit integers are more common now. But also that would have been a lot more writing on the board and yeah, a lot more math. What do you think of this? Was this helpful? Well, one, how did you like this compared to the previous one where we were showing no notes? Now we're showing minimal notes. And also if you're listening to this, then look down in the description. We'll have a picture of this. But should we continue doing episodes like this? Or would you like to hear more about experiences that may help you along the way? You know, mistakes I've made or things like that. Or hear users' questions. Like I said, this is a user's question. That's how this one came to be. Because I actually think the next thing I'd like to talk about if we continue doing this is how we actually shift bits to the left and to the right. What exactly happens? And if you're in a B world, you're using a bit shift left and a bit shift right. But you also probably have ran into this being done without those instructions. You didn't fully understand what was going on. Would that be helpful or should we move on to something else? Let me know down in the comments. And again, please hit that like button and subscribe. Till next time. Hi, this is Tim. And this is Amber of TW Controls. We run the automation store. Hey, thanks for finding our channel. Here's a playlist with some similar videos. And YouTube thinks you'll like this video. Please like our video and subscribe to our channel. And if our videos have helped you make some money and you're not using our products, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Till next time. See ya.